Welcome to the Ulbrich Way, a training video series of Ulbrich Stainless Steels and Special Metals Incorporated. This series is aimed at helping you understand the ideas that drive your company in its future direction. At the end of this video presentation, your session leader will conduct a short discussion in which you can get any questions answered. Right now, all you have to do is watch and listen. In 1924, we were uh, rolling carbon and mild steel in, in small quantities to specific tight tolerances, such as were later required in stainless steels. Now, with stainless steel coming into the picture, more than ever, people required experimental runs of small quantities of stainless steel called 188, which was developed from the old KA2 German days. We were the only firm in the country that could take us an order for a small quantity of stainless steel. In 1924, my father, Fred Albrecht Sr., started Albrecht. My father was a product of Wallingford, Connecticut. He was born, raised, and educated here. And after graduating from high school, he went to one of the three major industries in town, which was a knife, fork, and spoon, and hollowware manufacturer named R. Wallace & Sons. He worked there for five years, both on the inside and the outside, on the sales desk. He found that his uh, employment opportunities were limited, so he decided, like many others, to go west and seek his fortune. Well, he and another fella pooled their resources, bought a car, and went west, and worked in a variety of jobs on the way going west. They eventually ended up in Pennsylvania and they worked in the Donora Works of U.S. Steel. My father's job was as a scrap inspector for one year at the Donora Works in Pennsylvania. Now, he knew that there was no place here in Wallingford and this area on how to inspect scrap. So he decided to come back to Wallingford and start a scrapyard. And that's how our company originally started as a scrapyard. What he would do is he would go out in the fields of the farmers and cut, cut up their equipment that they left in the fields. And he would get paid, usually in a barter manner, such as chickens or pigs or apples or corn or something like that. And that was his source of scrap. That together with cars, which were old cars, or cars that had been in wrecks. And then he got himself about two dozen main companies in which he took their scrap, industrial scrap. So he had three sources of scrap. That was the beginning of the company, and that was his dream, the American dream of starting his own company. His parents were born in Hamburg, Germany. He was a first-generation American. He married Ada Shea, my mother, who was born in Italy. And between the two of them, they devoted their life to this company, to their children, and to each other. During the Great Depression, uh, we had piles of scrap, but no money, and my father decided to make knives, forks, and spoons. The Merton Wallingford area was second only to Sheffield, England, in the manufacture of cutlery. So it's natural that he went into this business also. What happened when the Second World War came along was that the government decided that Ulbrich, namely himself, would make the Army mess kit knife. So he got the contract for the Army mess kit knife along with others, all right, and decided and proceeded to make knives for the Army mess kit knife. He also made forks and spoons. But since the rating for this particular product wasn't as high as, for example, ammunition, he couldn't get the exact thickness and width that he needed. But he knew these people in the steel mills because he had been supplying them scrap for years. And they said, well, we'll supply a thicker material or wider material, but you're going to have to convert it to the correct thickness and width that you want so you can make your product. That was the beginning of our re-rolled company during the Second World War. Well, after the war and after, after having gone through making more knives, forks, and spoons, 
he decided to sell the knife, fork, and spoon company, eliminate the 24 or so scrap companies, uh, scrap customers that he had, right, and with the proceeds, buy a quality mill so that we could become a precision re-roller. Up to this point, we weren't really a precision re-roller. And he bought the third Zenzimer mill ever made for rolling stainless steel. And that was a precision rolling mill. And he placed the purchase order in 1955. And we received the mill in 1956. And on the mill, there's a, uh, a decal that says T. Zenzimer. 1956. That's the date that we became a quality precision re-roll strip mill. So we were producing small quantities of precision material that were that customers could not obtain from any other source and now we were expanding our horizons outside of the state of Connecticut. In the course of time we added to our stainless steel base, we added nickel base alloys, cobalt base alloys, titanium and titanium alloys. In the late 50s and the, and the early 60s, having Pratt Whitney in this area making jet engines and supplying material, small quantities of material to customers, some of whom were selling the material to Pratt Whitney, Pratt Whitney decided that they better have an audit done on our company. They allocated two engineers on a part-time basis to go through our company and determine what we had to do as far as systems go for traceability of material, as far as training goes of our people, and as far as our laboratory equipment goes, what we had to buy and in order to pass their audit. And that cost a fortune for us which we didn't have, but we did it. My father did it, he borrowed the money, he went out and he did what he had to do in order to become qualified by Pratt Whitney. We, right from the beginning, became a high-tech re-roll operation, thanks to Pratt Whitney. We were now supplying material to Boeing, and Roar, North American Aviation, and General Electric, and many, many other customers, including the automobile first tier and second tier suppliers. That is a story that my father never believed could ever happen. He started a company, he had no idea that we were going to become a quality supplier to the finest manufacturers in the world. That's what we had become. But we learned that we could not supply material to all of our customers the way they wanted it and when they wanted it because some of them were in Texas and California and Midwest and trying to supply them from Wallingford, Connecticut where our strip mill was, we couldn't do it. So we systematically set up four strip centers. These strip centers today are called stainless steel service centers one located in North Haven, Connecticut, one in Georgia outside of Atlanta, Norcross, Georgia, one in Alsip, Illinois outside of Chicago, and one in Fresno, California, halfway between San Francisco and Los Angeles. And these are slitting operations, cut to length operations. They have redundant equipment. They each have roughly the same type of equipment, right? specifically geared for the needs of the customers within that geographical area. And it's important that you understand the difference between the steel service centers and the reroll mill. The steel service centers supply material, they supply the needs of the customers in their geographical territory. And many of those products our mill cannot produce or prefers not to produce. So less than one in 10 pounds that every steel service center supplies comes from our company, our reroll mill. 90% and more of the materials supplied by our steel service centers come from other companies. Our objective is to supply the needs of the customers. 
The objective of our reroll mill is to make the highest quality material. The more difficult the product, the better. And that's where we truly excel. In the late 50s and early 60s, we were instrumental in the forerunner of the space shuttle and obta obtaining and ro rolling materials, some of which had never been rolled to foil gauges before. Right? We were instrumental in the forerunner of the B-1 bomber. What I'm getting at is that Ulbrick has always been in the forefront, the forefront of technological requirements. In the 60s, also, we learned that we could not produce heavy gauge and narrow material. First of all, the coils weren't long enough. The burrs were too much for the needs of our customers. We had camber. We weren't producing a good product. So we decided we would make the product from a round wire and flatten the round wire, be able to supply a big coil with excellent edges, fine finishes, and so forth. That was the beginning of our Ulbrich Wire Corporation. We also found that we were in a global economy. So we started a steel service center in Sheffield, England, the same Sheffield that was the number one in knives, forks, and spoons, and hollowware, as I said earlier. We started this operation in Sheffield, England, to take care of the demands of stainless steel by the uh, UK customers, United Kingdom customers. And this operation also services many of the requirements of the continent, the European continent. In 1993, we purchased a company called Aerodyne Alloys, located in East Hartford in Indianapolis, Indiana. And we purchased that company. They were supplying Pratt & Whitney, General Electric, and their subcontractors. And uh, we were able to purchase that company. And today, this company, within two years, has four steel service centers. Today, we have approximately 475 people. Our sales are in the area of $150 million. We are a profitable company and have been for a long time. And our objective is to supply our customers with what they need when they need it. It's your talent that is going to make Ulbrich what it can be tomorrow. You owe it to yourself, I owe it to myself, and we owe it to all those who preceded us with their efforts. And I know that's what's going to make Ulbrich the premier quality company in the United States in, in our business in the future as it is today. Thank you. Hi, I'm Spider Bielek, Ulbrich's Vice President of Corporate Development. And as you can hear from what Fred had to say, we've become quite a complex company. We're not General Motors or Ford Motors or GE or a large company like that, but it's difficult sometimes to understand what it is that each part of the company does so that it works together. What I'm going to give you now is a road map that shows you exactly how all the pieces of the company fit and how everybody does work together. In the beginning, there were the owners, and the Albrechts had a direct line to the customers. And that's basically the connection. After a while, as we became complex, they needed a staff to help them walk through and control all the various parts of the business. So they developed this corporate staff to take care of accounting, computers, planning, insurance and banking, legal, personnel, and a host of other needs. The actual business of the company, though, begins with our manufacturing divisions. In Ulbrich Wire, we make round-shaped and flat wire to custom orders. In Ulbrich Specialty Strip Mill, we make custom strip and foil. Again, all the custom orders. This is unlike the larger steel mills that continue to produce the same products over and over again. We only produce products in our manufacturing divisions that are custom ordered by a client for a specific time. Next, we have distribution divisions. And they fall into two basic groups. One group is for strip products. 
The other group is for bar and sheet products. Let's talk about the strip product divisions first. We have five service centers that handle our strip products throughout the United States and England. We name our service centers after their location. So they're called, respectively, Albrecht of California, Albrecht of New England, Albrecht of Georgia, Albrecht of Illinois, and Albrecht of the United Kingdom. These service centers stock strip coils and have some slitting and finishing equipment that enable them to finish standard material to a custom customer order. Looking over here at the bar and sheet products, we have Aerodyne Albrecht. And Aerodyne Albrecht is our service center division for bar and sheet products specifically. And they have facilities in East Hartford, Connecticut, Indianapolis, Indiana, Houston, Texas, Norcross, Georgia, and Fresno, California. In these service centers, they stock bar and sheet, largely for aerospace, but for some other technical industries, and also uh, provide cutting technologies using water jet and other high-tech methods. The last and most important part of the structure of this company is how we sell our products. And our products are sold through several divisions. One is Ulbrich International, which is largely responsible for selling the products of our manufacturing divisions overseas. And they sell through agents in places like France, Germany, Italy, Australia, Canada, and Mexico. Domestically, in the United States, our sales force reports through our strip service centers. These sales representatives represent the products of all of Ulbrich's divisions to the customer. When a sales representative sits down in front of a customer, they could be selling some wire, some specialty strip, some more standard strip items, perhaps some cutting, or some bar and sheet. All through one salesperson whose responsibilities are all divisions. The general managers of all of these divisions all have very special jobs as well. Each division is run by a general manager who's responsible for the profitability of their division. They're also responsible for managing the field sales force in their region. As you can see, it's quite a complex company. We're selling through nine different divisions in 16 different locations around the world. To the customer, though, we're still only one company. Good. So that means that uh, because of our quality previously supplied and the service that we provided, we'll be in better shape for the remainder of the year. Hopefully. Hopefully. Hi, I'm Michelle Duval, outside sales representative, sort of an ambassador for the Ulbrich companies. As you've learned, Ulbrich is composed of many divisions. Some of our customers purchase from just one division, for instance, Ulbrich Wire, and other customers may utilize all of our products, strip, wire, sheet, and bar. When I meet with a customer, I represent Ulbrich, regardless of what company produces or delivers that particular product that the customer requires. This requires me to be knowledgeable in all the products, services, and applications that we can offer in addition to what our customers' needs are. This is Jack Bradshaw, Regional Sales Manager of the Northeast. I report to Jack. Thank you, Michelle. Hi, my name is Jack Bradshaw. I'm the Regional Sales Manager for the Eastern Region. Uh, as you're aware and as you have heard previously, uh, the Elbrick Corporation is a very technical corporation and the metals industry per se is highly technical. It is unrealistic to think that the outside sales force uh, can know everything technically about every product line that we have. Because of this we have significant backup resources available to each of the outside people. Uh, that being five metallurgists on staff as well as a number of product specialists. Michelle would act as a coordinator or team captain in developing new products with our metallurgical staff and our product specialists. Um, she would bring together this group for technical visits and my function would be to help her coordinate uh, and support 
her efforts as well as the corporate goals. Let's review what we've seen today. From our chairman, we heard how his father founded our company and the kinds of business we've been in through the years. You heard about our growth and our development. You saw the structure of the company and the shape and roadmap of how all the various divisions work together as one company. And from our sales team, you heard how the customer sees us as one company working together. Throughout all of the growth and all the developments and all of our history, each move, each new idea, each new piece of structure, each new division, were all motivated by customer need. By staying close to our customers, understanding what they wanted and needed, we forged our company into what it is today. This concept underlies the basic philosophy of Ulbricht Stainless Steels and Special Metals, and it's given voice in the first tenet of our revolution, total customer responsiveness. for this session of the Ulbrich Way. We hope it has helped your understanding of your company. Your session leader will now conduct a short discussion of this subject. If your questions don't seem to be answered in this discussion, or if you have some ideas or suggestions of your own, you can call or write to us directly at the number shown on the screen. We hope you enjoyed watching, and we look forward to being with you again for another session of the Ulbrich Way.